Hey guys, I'm back with another video today. Um, and today we're going to be doing a Artix Linux install. Um, so Artix is like a fork of Arch Linux, but it doesn't have any systemd, which is better for... Um, there's a lot of different reasons, but I'll let you research those on your own. So um, before jumping into this install, I'd just like to say... Um, I am going to be using a virtual machine, so I won't be doing anything with on hardware. If you are on hardware, you're going to need a USB, and you need to download like a program like Etcher, or just do it through the terminal, whatever you like, um, and download an ISO of Ar Artix Linux from their website, which I'll leave a link to down below, and I'll also leave a link to the install. Alright, so once you have that, you're going to want to boot to your USB, and you should boot to a screen that looks like this. All right, so once you're here, um, you can either you can either click this CD, USB, or stick. I haven't found that it matters. This will actually get you into your bootable medium. So um, once again, I am going to be using OpenRC. It's just because that's what I'm familiar with. I like it. It's on Gen 2. It's my main system. Um, but you also have the option of uh, S6 and run it. I've used run it before. I like it. Um, it works well. But I'm not going to be covering that so much in this guide. I will probably go over the commands so you can feel free to follow along. But I am going to be installing for OpenRC. But they're similar processes. So once you're in, you're just going to want to log in with Artix for the password and username. And uh, let me try to get rid of this little VM box thing. All right. So once you're in here, I normally just type su so I can get into my root user. Um, do a little lsblk to see what's going on in here. All right, so um, I'm going to be using sda. It's going to be the hard drive I'm going to be partitioning. So uh, first, we're going to be partitioning our hard drive, of course, which is arguably the most complex task here. It's not difficult, but it can get <clears throat> a little confusing if you're new. So obviously my first hard drive is that SDA 20, 24 gigs, you can see it. Um, so I'm going to start by doing fdisk, let's see, it's fdisk dev SDA. Dev is where all of the different hard drive partitions are stored. So run fdisk on here. All right, so what we're going to need is um, my partition scheme is generally just a boot and a root partition. Um, if you if you have less than maybe like four or five gigs of RAM somewhere around there, you might want to look into doing a swap partition, but I don't do those. I don't think that they're useful um, because it essentially is just overflow for your RAM. So if, if a program needs more RAM than you have on your computer, then it will flow into your swap. Okay, so let's start by making our boot partition. This is going to be a UEFI tutorial, although you can do a BIOS install if you know what you're doing. It's a pretty similar process. You just need to set up a BIOS partition and then at the end set your bootloader to BIOS. All right, so let's start by making a new partition, or sorry, we're going to make a GPT partition table. So just type G and enter and create one and then do N for a new partition and then click enter because it's going to be at the first sector of your partition and then um, enter again and then plus 5, 12 megabytes. That's enough for your boot. So then we're going to create another one and just click enter all the way through. It's going to take up the rest of that partition. All right, so now we have two partitions, um, but we need to set what they are. So press T for type and then one for R root partition and then the type that we're going to want um, you can press L to list it but I know it's one so I'm going to press one because it's a EFI system partition which we need for our um, boot and then for our root we need a Linux file system which is 20 let's see press 2 and then press 20 all right so now we have both of our partitions so press W to write all right those have been written now we need to actually set what our partitions are. <clears throat> okay, so to do that, we are going to do this. 
men makefs.fat f32 and then dev and then sda1 or whatever your hard drive is if you're on an nvme it's going to be nvme0 and then one or whatever um, but for me it's going to be sda1 all right so we made that fat um, now we are going to make an ext4 partition for our file system our root partition all right so it's going to be um, makefs.ext4 and then dev sda2 Right, and if you ever want to look at what your partitions look like, LSBLK is very useful. So you can see um, under SDA we have our boot and root partitions. Our root being SDA two and our boot being SDA one. They're different sizes. All right, now we need to uh, mount our partitions. So um, essentially, what we're going to do here is actually install. Um, Artix into our system in the Linux kernel, like our hardware, our computer from our USB. Um, but first, we need to mount um, our USB directory boot. So it's going to make our boot directory, make directory, mount home. That's going to be our home directory. All right, now if you're using swap, you're going to want to do this command. Do not do this if you're not using swap. And then your disk for SDA3 and then uh, slash swap uh, that is also on the Artix wiki all right now we're actually going to mount our partitions to the files we just created the directories all right so let's mount our root directory first mount dev SDA2 our root directory and then we're going to put that to mount and then mount dev sda1 to mount boot. Now that we have these mounted, um, ping uh, whatever server you want. I'm going to do gnu.org. Make sure you're getting some kind of connection. So I am there. So I'm going to move on. Now we're going to actually um, install our base. So if you're using run it, or if you want to use run it or S6, it's going to be a different command. You can check the wiki for that, which I'll leave a link to. It'll be base strap, mount base, base devel, open RC. This is going to take a minute. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna install our kernel. So base strap mount Linux, Linux firmware. Now you don't need Linux firmware, but I'd recommend getting it. All right, we did that. All right, so now we're gonna generate our FS tab so that everything mounts correctly. We're gonna do it with this command. Okay. So now we're gonna true into our system. So we're kind of gonna be actually on our hardware, sort of with this command. Okay, so now we can see in, we're in here. Um, 
So I'm just going to install um, Vim because it's my preferred editor. You can do the same if you like using Vim because I just don't want to use Nano. Okay. All right, so now we're going to want to set our local time. This part is kind of annoying to do, but well, I guess configuring the whole base system is, but it just takes a long time. But just do it with this command. Region, my region is going to be America, New York. And then this to Etsy local time. Okay. Now do HW six o'clock. Sys T O H C. Okay. So now we need to generate our locale. So um, I'm going to use Vim here. You can use Nano if you don't know how to use Vim. Um, similar process. Um, okay, so do Vim or Nano locale.gen. All right, and then I'm going to search for en underscore us. Um, so this is the one I need. I would assume that's what you need to. Um, so save that. <coughs> okay, now that we did that, we need to type in this command. It is quite a long one. Now we need to install our bootloader. So this is another long command. And if you are on a BIOS system, you're gonna need a different command, which will also be in the Artix wiki, which I'll link below. But we're gonna be doing a EFI install here. So so first do this to install um, grub and OS prober. You'll need this if you wanna do like dual boots or anything. And then EFI boot manager yes okay now you need to run this command So that installed successfully. Now we need to run this. Okay. All right, now we are going to configure our user and user permissions. Um, so we're gonna create the root password, put whatever you'd like here. Okay, now we're going to create a new user. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to edit the sudoers file. Oops, I just need to install VI for this. Sudo. So personally, I just like to kind of go through and disable all of these. This might not be what you want to do. You can research that on your own. Um, but I'm going to add my other user to have all the permissions. Okay. So save that. 
Now we need to edit our network, just do our network configuration. So I'm gonna vim Etsy host name, and then type in whatever you want your host name to be. I'm just gonna do Artix box. Okay. All right, now we need to install DHC PCD. Then vim into hosts. All right, so here we're gonna have to we're gonna have to type this exactly what I'm typing. These tabs don't matter. You could just use a space if you want, but I just like how tabs look, so that's what I'm gonna be using. All right, and then you're gonna have to put your host name here. So mine's Artix box. And dot local domain. Then your host name, Artix box. All right, save that. All right, now there's different commands if you're on OpenRC, run it or S6. That'll be in the wiki. But since we're on OpenRC, we're gonna do pacman s conman open rc to install that conman gtk so we can actually see our network this is going to be pretty big because it's installing gtk stuff and a lot of other dependencies so it's going to take a little bit Okay, well, if that's done, we need to add this as a service. So we're going to do rc update add conman d. All right, so it added it. Okay, so now we are just about finished with installing our base system. So um, you can exit the true root environment and reboot. So now we can see we have a grub session open and we can just go right into Artix. All right, so we can log in with our new user. All right. And I believe we should have sudo permissions. Mm, install NeoFetch. Yep, looks like we do, it's perfect. All right, so from here, what I would recommend doing is um, installing first um, Yay. It's a AUR helper, which the the um, Arch user repository. It's basically community made files for people to download and use. It's just super convenient way to get things that aren't on the official repository. Um, and I would recommend using a whatever desktop environment or window manager you like. I like DWM. And I personally like getting do as instead of using sudo because sudo is quite bloated for what it is. But um, yeah, so that's the install. And uh, thank you for watching.